Okay, so we're resuming our conversation. Uh, Daniel Finke here from the Camels with Hammer Show uh, with Jerry DeWitt, former clergy, uh, former Christian clergy who is now uh, exploring what it means to be um, a, a preacher who is an atheist. And uh, and so at the end of the last uh, segment, we uh, Jerry was talking about um, how in the South there's uh, sometimes an alienation from uh, or, or a perception that that mainstream atheist leaders and famous authors kind of represent a foreign culture and 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 even a a condescending one to to southern culture uh, and and so so he's going to pick up with that with that thought yeah so um you know obviously obviously i don't i don't hold any uh, hard feelings or resentment towards those that have led the charge thus far. You know, I'm very much in love with the Four Horsemen. But at the same time, it's, it's obvious, it's not just obvious to me, but it's obvious to people outside of the movement who interview me or come across me and instantly draw a comparison between me and, you know, the Ivy Leaguers, um, that, that it isn't always everyday language. I mean, I, I truly consider myself to be a uh, you know, an, an everyday person. And that's not insulting to say those other people aren't. We're probably all trying to be more like them. But at the same time, we have something to offer, and not just to offer the movement as a whole. That's probably too much of a stretch. But what we, what we have to offer is to people like us in the deep south or within a, a more southern culture. And so, you know, it's always more relatable whenever you're relating to people that you're more related to. Yeah, and you know, and I think there's something very uh, elitist about, uh, you know, the tr traditional atheism and uh, a lot of atheists are elitist and they write off the need to have atheist community at all or talk about atheism because there's a condescension to the ordinary person. And uh, so, so you'll have a lot of well-educated scientists and philosophers and, and all sorts of academics um, or, or, or people uh, who, who are very well off financially, and they take, a, they take a view that, well, religion is for the ordinary people, and, you know, we know better. <laughs> right. and, 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 there's, and they have an assumption then. So, so I always find that when they're criticizing um, outspoken atheism, they almost see it as, one of the elite going and picking on ordinary people when they when right. they criticize religion, right. uh, and and what I find so interesting is what, what I think they miss is that Dawkins has reached out to the very ordinary atheists yeah. who exist all over the world who feel isolated. They're not living in an ivory tower with other atheists. They feel alone in their atheism, and and they they feel like an outcast for their atheism. And and there's a there's a whole consciousness about that that of raising the identity of ordinary atheists to be to know that they're not alone and and, and to, that they're normal and that they're they're um, they e they even have the intellectual uh, community very largely on their side Absolutely. even though the intellectual community won't act, you know explicitly support them and so right. what I yeah we're we're in a stage now where if we really are going to be an or a movement that is not elitist and is for everybody it's going to need our voices that come from other demographics yeah, that's I, really I completely agree two two quick issues there one is that you know I I've, I've spent quality time with Richard Dawkins I know that Richard Dawkins is a compassionate person yeah. um, from from our perspective because he's from across the pond obviously his mannerisms are different than ours you know his idioms that he you know that he uses are, are different than ours and that can be a distraction whenever we're so when we're so used to one particular personality type but I know for a fact from my experience sitting in the room with him sitting on the couch next to him and him hearing my story and watching his facial expressions and 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 knowing not just from his contribution to the clergy project, but his contribution in conversations to me personally, that that he is the caring person and that he's not an elitist and that he he doesn't see himself as above or beyond and is reaching out as far and wide as he can. At the same time, <laughs> his personality 
is going to limit the people he can talk to, just like my personality is going to limit the people that I can talk to. And so the, the winning strategy is not to mimic any one single archetype, but instead to say there are no templates, and everyone is reaching out to everyone that they can. You know, I, I'm... I, I don't have any, um, you know, illusions of, of moving to the Northeast and them saying, you know, Jerry, you're such an awesome preacher. We're just going to uh, give you a doctor's degree in communication and you can teach us all how to talk to people. You know, <laughs> right. I know that's not going to happen and it shouldn't happen. But in Louisiana, where, where my work is primarily focused, I do fit in very well and I can be effective. And so I, as I've said from the very beginning, everybody should be doing everything they can because yeah. it's going to reach or help someone.